Hello Year 4, it's Mrs Cross here with your SPAG lesson for Wednesday the 20th of January. SPAG being spelling, punctuation and grammar. Today we are learning to differentiate between the simple past and present perfect tenses. The first thing you need to do as always please is to pause the video and write the date and the world and underline it. Let's start by looking at our steps to success for today. As long as you can do these three things by the end of our lesson, you will have achieved your learning objective for today. Number one is identify verbs in a sentence. Number two is say whether a sentence is written in the simple past or the present perfect tense. And number three is choose the appropriate tense for a sentence that you are writing. First thing we need to think about then is what is a verb? Could you please pause the video and write down three words which are verbs for me? Okay, your next challenge then is to think about what is not a verb? Could you please write down three words which are not verbs for me? Let's find out a little bit more. I'm going to share a website with you. Well, what a lovely view. The perfect place to tell you all about verbs. Oh, I spoke too soon. There's some building work going on. Oh, where were we? Oh, yes. A verb is a word used to describe an action. That's doing something. Or a verb can be used to describe a state. That's feeling something. Or a verb can be used to describe an occurrence. That's something happening. You can't even have a sentence or question without a verb. That's how amazingly important verbs are. The workers here are working. Working is a doing word. They work up on this building all day long. Work is also a verb because it is an occurrence. Oh dear, what's this? They can hear something. Here is also a verb. The workers can see a gorilla monster climbing the building. Yes, that's correct, gorilla monster. You climbed the building. You are a clever gorilla monster. Okay, hopefully that was a bit of a recap for you on what verbs are. We've talked about them a lot over the last few years. A verb is a word used to describe an action, a state, or an occurrence, something that happens. So, an action. The rabbit was jumping in the field. Jumping is the verb. That's the action that the rabbit is doing. A verb can be used to describe a state of being. being. That's feeling something. For example, the monster likes roller coasters. He likes roller coasters. Likes is the verb. Or a verb can describe an occurrence, something which is happening. For example, the caterpillar became a butterfly. It became a butterfly. Every single sentence you write includes a verb. If it doesn't include a verb, it is not a sentence. Okay, let's have a go at this one together. The gorilla monster roared from the roof. I wonder which one is Highlights the verb. the verb in each sentence. I think that one might be roared. Hopefully you agree with me. The building shook. What did the building do? It shook. The workers want some peace and quiet. Ooh, the workers, that's a noun. Peace and quiet, adjective. No, sorry, noun. The workers want some peace and quiet. Want, want is our verb. Let's just check that. Brilliant, you found all the verbs. 
Okay, have a look at the verbs quiz now. What is a verb? The name of a person or an object. No, that's a noun, isn't it? A doing or an action word or a describing word. No, a describing word is an adjective. That must be the correct answer. Which is a verb? Building, room, door. Well, room and door are nouns. They describe things. It's got to be building. I am building a wall. That's an action. What must every sentence have? An adjective, an exclamation mark, or a verb? Hopefully you remember that I said a moment ago that it's not a sentence if it doesn't include a verb. Which of these is a verb? Went, I, or to? Have a think for a moment. Which one do you think I'm about to click? Went. Which of these is a verb? Made, messy, or men? Oh, men is a noun, isn't it? Messy is an adjective. It describes something. So uh, I uh, have a messy room. So the verb has got to be made. I made a cake. Okay, my action is the making. Oh, brilliant. Five out of five. Let's go back to our slides. Okay. As a class, we need to decide which columns these sentences belong in. I saw a film. Is that a past tense sentence? Is that talking about something that has happened already in the past, in history? Or is it a present tense sentence, something that is happening at the moment? I saw a film. Hopefully you realise because the verb is saw, it is a past tense sentence. Okay, I watch a film. The verb is watch. I watch a film. Oh, that's happening at the moment, isn't it? I listen to music. Oh, that's happening at the moment. That's a present tense sentence. Where would I put I listened to music? I could put that in the past, couldn't I? If I could put the word yesterday on the front of it, then I can put that in my past column. Yesterday, I listened to music. That makes sense. Let's put that in the past column. I drove a car. Yesterday, I drove a car. Oh, look, I could put that in the past tense column. Drove is a past tense verb. I drive a car. Oh, that's present tense. That's happening at the moment. I eat a meal. Present tense or past tense? What do you think? That's present tense. I ate a meal yesterday. I ate a meal. That's past tense. My verb is ate. So let's have a look again. We've got our past tense. I saw a film. And our present tense. I watch a film. Our past tense. I listen to music. Our present tense, I listen to music. Our past tense is I drove a car. And our present tense is I drive a car. Our past tense is I ate a meal. And our present tense is I eat a meal. Hopefully you can see the difference. Where would you put this sentence? I have eaten a meal. Ooh. Unusual, isn't it? It doesn't really fit in either of those boxes, does it? It is actually in the past, but it's called the present perfect tense. The present perfect tense. We're going to learn more about that today. Okay, next thing I want you to do, I want you to decide which of these sentences is correct. Okay. I went to the zoo yesterday or I have been to the zoo yesterday. Which one is correct? Let me get my pen so I can make it really clear. The correct one is I went to the zoo yesterday. What about the next one? When you have eaten your dinner, you can go and play. Or when you ate your tea, you can go and play. The first one is the correct one. I have lost my pencil during the last lesson, or I lost my pencil during the last lesson. Which one is correct? 
Number six is correct. I lost my pencil. Let's look at seven and eight. Wait for me, I haven't put my coat on yet. Or, wait for me, I didn't put my coat on yet. The correct one is number seven. I haven't put my coat on yet. Let's keep going. My mum has grown her hair very long. It's now down to her waist. My mum grew her hair very long. It's now down to her waist. Which is the correct one? The correct one is number one. The plane has arrived, but they have not opened the doors yet. Or the plane arrived, but they have not opened the doors yet. Number three is the correct one. The plane have arrived. On my birthday, I had a party and all my friends slept over. Or, on my birthday, I have had a party and all my friends have slept over. The first example is the correct one. What we've been looking at there is some examples of the past, um, the simple past and the present perfect tense. They are two different tenses. In the simple past tense, we might say, I saw a film. In the present perfect tense, we might say, I have watched a film. So we've got that extra word in there, have. In the simple past, we might say, I listened to music. And in the present perfect, we might say, I have listened to music. We've got that extra word in there and it's the word have again. In the simple past, I might say, I drove a car. And in the present perfect, I might say, I have driven a car. We've got that extra word in there and it's have. In the simple past, I might say, I ate a meal. And in the present perfect, I would say, I have eaten a meal. Okay. All of those present perfect examples have got the word have in them. Where would we put these? I kept warm. Oh, well, it's not got the word have in, so I'm going to put it in that column. He has made the coffee. Where do I put that one? It's got, it hasn't got have, it has has, because we're not talking about I anymore. We're talking about he. I have, he has. That one goes over there. I taught. We don't have the word have in it, so it's going to go over there. I swam. That one will go there. She has walked. That's present perfect. That goes over there. So, as we just said, the present perfect tense uses something called an auxiliary verb, an extra verb, and it is the verb to have. Okay, and it goes before your main verb. I have walked. Walked would be my main verb. I have cooked. Cooked would be my main verb. I have eaten. Eaten is my main verb. When I say I, I say I have. When I talk about you, I say you have eaten. When I talk about we, I say we have eaten. And when I talk about they, I would say they have eaten. But it takes a different form when we talk about he, she and it. He has eaten. She has eaten. It has eaten. I'm not quite sure when we'd use that one. It has eaten. Right, let's try and fill in these gaps. So, Pause the video for a moment. I'd like you to start by thinking, how would you fill in the gaps on these sentences? My friend Kashan has, has lived in this town for five years. We have been best friends all that time. My dad says he has taken on the way I speak. 
Unfortunately, the cat has been sick on the carpet. Yuck. Mum asked, where have you been all this time? What a shame, sports day has been postponed because of the rain. Has everybody chosen a partner now? What has happened to all my pencils? Asked the teacher. Hopefully you got those the right way around with your have and your has. Okay, we now need to choose the correct form in these sentences. So my hair has grew or my hair has grown recently, which do you think is the correct past participle, the, the third person past form? Grew or grown? My hair has grown recently, hasn't it? Wow, look how much work you've did or you've done today. Which is the correct one? You've did or you've done? The correct one is done. Look how much work you've done today. Dad didn't put the washing out because it has, was or been raining all day. Because it has, was raining all day or it has been raining all day. And the answer is clearly been, isn't it? Mum, Josh has came round or Josh has come round. Can I go out to play for a bit? Josh has come round. Oh no, I must have forgot my homework book. Or, oh no, I must have forgotten my homework book. The answer is forgotten. Number six, the teacher has blew the whistle for the end of playtime or the teacher has blown her whistle for the end of playtime? The answer is blown. Shh, the film has begun already. Or, shh, the film has begun already. The answer is begun. And number eight is, would you like to see the portrait I've drew of you? Or would you like to see the portrait I've drawn of you? The answer is drawn. Okay, it's your turn now to have a go at looking at the simple past and the present perfect tense. Now, don't forget, simple past tense doesn't have that extra auxiliary verb, have, from the verb to have, which will be have or has in your sentence. If you remember that, you will find your work much easier today. So your simple past won't have your have and has but your present perfect should have those. Let's have a look at what you need to do. First thing you're going to need to do today is say whether, some, whether these um, sentences are written in the present perfect or the simple past. I have watched a film, so tick the correct column. She walked, we have eaten, you have eaten the apple. I read the magazine. She has swum. She has listened to some music. He climbed a tree and we talked. So you're going to put a tick in the correct column to show whether you think it's the present perfect or the simple past. In your go deeper section, you have got to cross out the wrong word or words in each sentence. Look how much work you have did or done today. So cross out either the word did or the word done. It snowed or it has snowed all of last week. You are either going to cross out snowed or has snowed. Dad made or dad has made spaghetti bolognese for our tea later tonight. Are you going to cross out made or are you going to cross out has made? For Christmas last year, we have dressed as elves or for Christmas last year, we dressed as elves. Decide which bit you are going to cross out. When you have done that year four, you need to write three sentences about what you have been doing today using the present perfect tense. For example, 
I have eaten my breakfast. I don't use that one because I've given you that as an example. I have eaten my breakfast. Okay, hopefully that's clear. When you have finished your work, um, you need to restart the video. So pause the video while you do your work and restart it when you have finished. Okay, well done year four. Let's have a look at the answers. I have watched a film. That's got have in it there, look, I have watched. That's the present perfect. She walked, simple past. We have eaten, present perfect. You can mark your work as I, as I tell you the answers, please. You have eaten the apple, present perfect. I read the magazine, simple past. She has swum, present perfect. She has listened to some music, present perfect. We, he climbed a tree, simple past. We talked, simple past. So just mark your work for me, please. Then we're going to go on to the next section, the go deeper. I'll just give you a moment. Okay, hopefully you found that bit okay. Cross out the wrong word or words in each sentence. Look at how much work you have done today. So I'm crossing out the word did. It snowed all of last week. I'm crossing out has snowed. Dad has made spaghetti bolognese for our tea later tonight. I'm crossing out the word made. And for Christmas last year, we dressed as elves, not we have dressed as elves. Your last bit, I'm not going to be, going to be able to tell you the answers to because you have written those yourself. You might have done things like, I have got dressed or I have brushed my teeth or I have um, done my work or I have watched some television. Okay. All those types of sentences would be correct. We're just going to finish with a really quick mini test to see how, you're, how you've got on today. So, Tick to show which sentence uses the present perfect. Oh, I'm looking for that extra auxiliary verb to have. She went to the shops. Oh, the verb to have, so either have or has, isn't in that sentence. She was going to the shops. Oh, that's a future one, isn't it? Can't be that one. And she has gone to the shops. Right, it's got to be that one. Rewrite the sentence below in the simple past. Remember to use full punctuation. Right, pause the video, please. Tell me what you'd like me to write. Hopefully you told me he walked through the woods. And I've remembered to punctuate it. I put a full stop on the end and a capital letter at the beginning. Okay, last question for you. Underline the verb form, which is in the present perfect in the passage below. Ooh, okay, so I'm looking for that auxiliary verb. So there's going to be two verbs in our sentence. The auxiliary one, which is have or has, and then our other verb. So Annie enjoys climbing trees in her garden and has made, there we are, I spotted it, has made, a swing that dangles from one of the branches with the help of her mum. Right, are there any more? She was crossing her fingers that there would be time to start making a real tree house, but the weekend disappeared. Just simple, simple past, isn't it? Annie was so pleased. Please, that's the past tense, but that's the simple past. Annie was so pleased to have an adult to tie the knots. Ah, they're trying to catch you out here. The word have is in the sentence, but it is not with your verb. Here it has made. This one is not with your verb. Your verb's over here, pleased. 
So it's, it works as a verb on its own. It's not an auxiliary verb. It's not an extra verb. Uh, just to clarify. So your present perfect might be has eaten, uh, have danced, has slept. In all of these examples, the verb has is right next to, in front of your other verb. In this example here, the verb have is a separate verb in your sentence. That is why it's not the present perfect. It is not next to your or in front of your other verb. I hope that makes sense. Right, well done today, year four. Hopefully, you have achieved your step to success and you can now confidently tell me where the verb is in a sentence. You can tell me whether something is written in the simple past or the present perfect and you are able to write your own sentences in the sen simple past or the present perfect tense. I will see you soon for your next lesson. Bye.